Pixel Sift is proudly supported by you, Mitchell. <laughs> Look, sometimes people forget to turn their microphones on, and uh, that's why you, uh, you know, each week you can support this show so that we can learn how to use the microphone properly. Uh, and you can do that by going to the Pixel Sift store and buying yourself some merch. And that is pixelsift.com.au forward slash sifters. And if you head to that address, you will get 25% off your next order. So you can buy some socks, you can buy a shirt, you can buy... If you're watching in the chat, Nightbot's got you covered. You can just click that link right there. There you go. Um, we are very happy to have you support us and 25% off. Get that. Sounds good, doesn't it, Mitch? Yep, it does. All right, let's jump in, shall we? Hello and welcome to episode 97 of Pixel Sift. My name is Gianni. Uh, I'm joined by Mitch. I'm back at this chair. I know. I can't back. believe it. He's back for... Yeah. How, we don't know how long. He's, as long as he plays his cards right, he'll still be there well, for Well, you while. fired me twice last week. I'm still here. I didn't fire you. I just made you the intern, uh, which was you know a bit of a disappointing embarrassment for you. But anyway, moving on. Uh, what we? Who else we're joined by this week, Mitch? I hear you asking. Uh, we're joined by Justin Ung. He is from Gatai Games. Uh, they're based in Singapore. Justin, thank you very much for joining us. Do we? Yep. Justin uh, will be telling us all about his games Stifled and Muffled Warfare, but we're also going to be checking out something else today, aren't we, Mitch? Yes, the world of Fortnite was taken by storm a couple of days ago when Epic announced that they were going to be pledging $100 million to their esports push in the coming year. Sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Let's jump in, shall it we? Is a lot of money. <laughs> hey, Mitch, what are you doing this Friday? Uh, I'm playing Fortnite this Friday. But didn't you hate that game? Yeah, but I'm going to go get my pickaxe anyway. What time is it on? It's on at 7.30pm on every Friday night. We play Fortnite, and I hate it. You'll love it. Ugh. On twitch.tv forward slash pixel sift. It is the worst, though. Like, Fortnite. Can't be the worst. It's worth $100 million. I know, yeah. So, poly in a polygon... Get the money. Yeah, pretty much. So... Epic is putting forward $100 million for Fortnite's first year of esports tournaments. Um, yeah, so it's about to kick, this is going to kickstart into overdrive, I, I assume in an Overwatch League style fanfare and production style, I, I think. And that I that's what you can expect out of it. I think most of the people will be working on both. It's a little bit thin on the ground about the detail at this stage, but what it looks like is they're going to have sort of like a fund available. So if you want to run your own esports tournament, you can kind of apply to Epic and say, can I have some money, please? Money, please. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's the idea that they're kind of moving from sort of a grassroots sort of perspective rather than maybe doing, you know, a high profile, high scale um production. I'm sure there will be high profile stuff as well. It it does beg the question how much will this 100 million how far will it go because it, it seems like they're going to be pretty pretty generous with it in regards to what it will take to um actually start one of these. So I mean it it's it'll be it'll be a 100 person tournament during E3. I mean that's already like Fortnite party royale that's already happening. So I'm wondering if this will dig into those funds already. Yeah, and I, one of the things that Epic said is that they're getting behind competitive play in a big way, but our approach will be different. We plan to be more inclusive and focused on the joy of playing and watching the game. So that, to me, sounds pretty interesting in comparison to this sort of high profile, high, uh, you know, slick production and all of that sort of thing. Justin, what do you think about this uh, this money, this $100 million that they've got there uh, wanting for people who want to play uh, Fortnite? I feel like I should start playing and then possibly get some money to make more games. <laughs> do you build build your stuff in uh, an Unreal? Uh, no, we mostly do it on Unity. Oh, yeah. it sounds like you have to switch over and get into the uh, the Fortnite game. Uh, what I think is really interesting about this is obviously it's a huge amount of money we're talking about here. Um, but we've got some some information uh, about some, some other games uh, that have put stuff in. So... Dota 2 last year um, put in $38 million in prize money, and that's mostly through their their large-scale uh, organized tournaments that they've had. Uh, yeah. And the international in uh, for in 2017 was a pool of nearly $25 million. And that money kind of came from uh, people in the uh, who are buying the passes and are actually kind of taking part in it that way. So Yeah. Like you buy... Like I think for Dota, if I'm not wrong, when you buy a certain in-game item, you actually contribute to the pool 
yeah, I think that's like the biggest difference here. Mm. Because like this is unreal, just straight up throwing money, saying, okay, I'm we're just gonna put hundred million up, and then the the thing is, they're not. I'm not seeing the details of how they're gonna spend it. Are they gonna spend it on funding the tournaments, or is it just price money? And that's like that's what I'm interested to see. It, yeah. it seems like the I would I would think that they would mainly put that money into funding the tournaments, and the prize money might come from a similar situation where you buy an in-game item. Because the prize money is a bit, I don't, I don't know. It seems like it'll be a bit weird to for well, Fortnite to, to me, put in the sort bill of looks like they're just putting the money forward. I mean, Epic has other sources of revenue. Obviously, Fortnite must be making enough money that this seems like a really reasonable uh, investment um, that they're going to put into the money. There isn't sort of, I guess, a time frame as well. It's is it a hundred million over the next three years? Is it just a hundred million dollars a year? Is it a once off a hundred million? We'll see what happens. Um, so I guess that's the sort of thing that looks a bit different. But to me, it doesn't seem like it will be tied to items that are in-game that will directly contribute, unlike the Dota sort of circumstance. I mean, we know very little about it to begin with. Um, yes. There are a couple of, like, article quotes that I can go off. Like, it, I mean, it, it does it, – it would make Fortnite one of the biggest esports in the world if, if, like, even a fraction of the people were to participate that are mm. playing it. Because so many people are playing it. It's just yeah. – like, we it, – it's unbelievable. I don't think anyone has experienced this kind of explosive growth ever, I, I don't think. I, I, think the, I think the biggest issue with having a Battle Royale based kind of like um, esports, right, is that could possibly be quite a bit of wait time because there's just way too much going on and pe when people spawn or they drop into different spaces and they just, there, there's like got to be a good chunk of like 10 minutes when they are just like searching for stuff or um, the, the person just dies in the first 10 minutes and that becomes, that could become an issue when it comes to like having something fun to watch but with 10 million dollars i think they can solve it yeah yeah, yeah. because um, that was one of the problems with the with the PUBG match match that was held uh, i think it was last year and one of the issues with it was it wasn't particularly engaging for the live audience because it was just a person sitting in a room for the person that won sat in a room or sat in some cover for about the whole game and then at the end it was a fight and then it, there wasn't really a way to portray it like with overwatch there's a little bit of consistency where a game is not really going to last traditionally more than about 10 minutes to 15 minutes one one match and you can kind of regulate that into like a, a couple of hours of broadcast time but in the game of Fortnite, they're so irregular you, you're never going to know exactly how long one's going to last so they're going to have to find out an average i think mm. the game is going to have to you're going to have to some they're going to have to come up with some sort of competitive mode like overwatch has its separate competitive mode I think it's going to have to happen. Something like that is going to have to be made to make it a little bit more standardized and a little bit easier to predict regarding broadcast time. I think what was also interesting is the fact that they're obviously it, Battle Royale, and I expect we'll see much more from this um, at E3 this year, um, but Battle Royale has obviously been very much on trend uh, and people are definitely trying to get into it. We know Call of Duty, uh, the new Call of Duty, is definitely <laughs> going to have a Battle Royale mode in it, but I wouldn't be surprised if the new Battlefield, which was just announced... This morning we'll have a, some sort of battle royale in it. It's set up for those big <laughs> battles. It has been, and uh, yeah, whether or not that actually now with this money here, where Epic can put their money where their mouth is, if, is it going to further drag the industry in that direction? Justin, what do you think about that? Okay, so I I think with um uh, with like battle royale, it used to it started off like as PUBG and then Fortnite. Those were the games that kind of put it put it to the forefront into the mainstream, mm -hmm. and they were like genre games. But right now it it's looking like it's going to become kind of like a game mode that is in every single first person shooter or any kind of game that could support it, right? So it's kind of like a, a Dark Souls situation where now, now there are a lot of games that it's Dark Souls but with this, but now it's going to be like, oh, it's PUBG but with this, right? So it's going to become very samey after a while and after, it'll get very, very saturated. So... But but in the meantime, it's still a lot of hype. But uh, if any any developer says they want to like make a BR game now, I'll be like, unless you have a lot of money, like hundred billion dollars, I put probably not do it. <laughs> yeah. It does. It does come with the times. It it's almost like capture the flag was one of these things where every game had a capture the flag. Well, any every, every shooter had a, a capture the flag mode, mm. and now it then it moved on to horde mode. Like every every combat orientated game for a while had a horde mode because of um, Gears of War. Yeah. And now it seems like even Halo ODST was a horde mode game with a story tacked onto it. Mm. And now we have Battle Royale mode, which is now it seems that the two leading games are just that, Battle Royale games. And yep, is, exactly. is what is essentially a game mode enough to hold 
hold steam for so long. Because if you're going to, um, I mean, we're only in maybe the second year of Fortnite and it's technically not even out yet. So are they going to burn through it before the game's uh -huh. even out? So so I think the biggest biggest benefit or like the biggest thing that um that uh Battle Royale games have going for them, right, in general is the mechanics themselves play very well to like the luck factor. Because like when you drop you have no idea where you're dropping. And then when you when you're there you're trying to figure out what's the next weapon can I get. And then if you get a weapon, you'll be like, Oh yeah, I got a decent weapon and I just missed the guy. If you win, great, you keep going, right? If you die, you're like, oh shit, if I just got a better weapon or if I got good at the game a bit more, I would be able to get the other guy. And the thing is, like, because the, the games are so massive, like these two games are, have such a big player base, the matches just come, like they just start so quickly mm -hmm. and it kind of keeps the loops go loop going. So I think by design, the game has a lot going for it uh, because you can play alone, you can play as teams, whereas like Capture the Flag... Or like hot mode style and stuff. It's better to just play friends, right? So it, yeah. it it has itself going. It has a lot going for it, and I think it will be around for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Shy on Twitch has an interesting point and uh, says that I think it's going to make PUBG rethink their structure uh, as this is sort of big competition. They were big at PAX, so maybe Fortnite will just overtake it. Um, could be an interesting. I think thing it, to see. I would argue that it already has. Yeah, massive, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think probably a factor of that is battle royale. Fortnite battle royale is free. Yeah, and, and it's on, and not only is it free, if you have it on, I'm not sure about Xbox, but when you have Xbox. it on, it isn't, but I'm not sure about Xbox, when, when you play it on PlayStation, you don't need PS Plus to play it. Oh, right. Yeah, you can just, you can just download Fortnite, and you can just play online without it, without, without the extra subs Which is subscription that fee. Probably That's massive. A lot of other companies are not going to be in a position to negotiate. You know, mm -hmm. Epic has got a lot of sway with, with these big companies, so they can say to them, look, this is a, a tentpole thing we're going to get heaps of players and we'll negotiate to pay whatever the cost is for that there um strictly better says that uh for for games as well consistency is the issue but fortnite is geared better for competitive play than PUBG because only because of the shorter game times and the build mechanic which allows for a higher skill cap right and so every game is different and and the game modes can hold better attention than a capture the flag for instance that's so. something that i always forget when playing fortnite as well the the build mechanic is something that is is the real is another level of skill and the strictly bet is completely correct it, it just seems like another barrier for entry that you could kind of your stats could be put into that for lack of a better term and you can get pros that are good at building instead instead of just relying on the luck factor which is pretty much PUBG's only mechanic it's the luck factor apart from you know the traditional shooting do you think anyone else I, is going to make a big play I, for this space oh, absolutely yeah Justin Blizzard is going to uh, I well, I don't, I don't really have an opinion about like whether other game developers would go into Battle Royale, but it seems like people are doing it already. So mm -hmm. you, you you guys mentioned right, like Call of Duty, um, Battlefield. Pretty sure they're gonna have a Battle Royale mode. If it's not, even if they're not like taking it seriously, seriously, they just do it because that's what's trending, right? And they will do it. It's just whether it gets picked up. Justin, yeah. Justin. The biggest difference is like Fortnite is just straight up free and that changes a lot of things. Yeah. Justin, you work in a space where there's a lot of developers all around. Have you noticed anyone really change direction with the development of their games because of this phenomenon? Um, so we moved out recently, but as of the time we moved out, I think most of the friends that was there, they were still like either doing their mobile games or working on VR or just like traditional games. I think we got a lot of questions regarding Marvel Warfare when we were making it like, hey guys, are you guys going to make it Battle Royale? And I'm <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the thing is that it's one of these games is 100% reliant on scale. And if you haven't got enough players there to do it, there's nothing worse than having an empty server that takes forever to load up. But one of the major advantages is that it's almost instantaneous that you load in yeah. and, and go. So, yeah, it's some, some big money. And I guess we'll see where that $100 million goes over the uh, you know the next year or so. Uh, should, we, should we put in something, Mitch? Can we run a tournament? Yeah, absolutely. Why Pixel not? Pixel tournament. Bring it on. Yes. Give us $100 million and we'll make whatever you want. Yes, whatever you need. <laughs> sell it out for $100 million. I think that's a good oh, no, price. I'll absolutely sell out Pixel Civ for $100 million. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's a fair price. Yeah, you'll be dead to me. It's fine, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into our next topic, shall we? Hey there. If you're enjoying the show and you want to hear more, subscribe to Pixel Sift on Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, or listen on pixelsift.com.au. See you there. 
What an award-winning promo. That is, I would give that award uh, <laughs> right away. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Pixel Sift. It's a weekly video game show, uh, and we talk to developers. Developers like Justin Ung, who joins us from Singapore. Justin, we've been uh, talking a little bit about your game uh, previously, and we played a bit of it with you on your sort of 24-hour stream, and it seems like you've recovered from that uh, long, uh, long marathon session. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, we we joined at the tail end of it, so like we I saw him when he was all chipper and ready to go at the beginning, and then when we started playing with it, it was just like less so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very last bit, I was like, "Oh, make it stop!" Oh, Why did these do this? pixels, guys. <laughs> now, for people... but it was a lot. It was a lot of fun, though. It was a lot of fun. So you you're gearing up for the next one. You're gonna run a, another 24 hour tournament. Why not go 48 hours, double or nothing? Well, I, I think it depends, right? Like, we have some ideas to see. Maybe for the next, like the actual launch, maybe we could do something. But right now, we'll see. Like, I want to try making streaming a more um, like regular part of our schedule. But right now, it's just too much work. Yeah. Now, for people who haven't had a chance to see uh, either you, either of your games that have you've been commercially released, uh, Stifled is a game that kind of puts the sort of genesis of genesis, sorry, of um, muffled warfare. What is Stifled if people haven't had a chance to to check it out? Okay, so um, Stifled, it's a VR and like, enabled sound-based horror game. So in the game, you use sound to see, kind of like uh, echolocation. So you make sound to see where you're going, but the thing is all the enemies in the game hear sound. So you make sound to see where you're going, but because you're making sound, the enemies can hear you and then track you. Right? And I think the, one of the more innovative things that we got a lot of credit for, credit for was um, the microphone input. So a lot of games use microphone input as like a communication tool. And more recently, I think... Uh, be- like alien isolation actually picks up the microphone to kind of let the alien know where you are, mm-hmm. and let the xenomorph know. And but in Stifle, it's like that's like the main core feature. So in real life, if you talk or you scream, the microphone picks it up, it creates the pulses, and the enemies can hear that. So that's how our tagline is like they hear your fear, and it's based on our student game called Lurking. Yeah. So when you're in a VR headset, you are kind of closed off from the world, and it it sort of feels like a bit of a vulnerable situation to be in anyway. Is it been hard to get people to put the headset on and play when you say, oh, it's going to be a spooky thing and you're going to get straight into this, uh, you know, uh, horror game? Okay, so so I thought you can play with or without VR, but most mm-hmm. of the times when we're at events, because, uh, like, we are being published by Sony, uh, we usually have the PSVR headset around. And it does take a bit of cajoling to get players to play. But when they do, um, they either say it's a really cool experience or they start screaming, which actually is great for the event because people will just crowd around. And even though people see themselves scream, see other people screaming, a lot of times when they see that, they actually want to give it a shot to see whether it's actually that scary. But horror works for different people, right? So when they, some people, they play and it's like, they look at me and like, this is not scary. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I've got a question from uh, Pretty Fly for a shy guy on Twitch. What inspired you to kind of make the game using this sound mechanic. He said it was sort of a student game, but where did that idea come from? Okay, so um, th- there's multiple like kind of origin stories that come, uh, and it's a lot of luck and serendipity. Uh, so when we were in school, because we had no kind of, uh, there's no need for financial success, we had no baggage on that, right? So we decided, okay, let's make something different, let's make something cool. Um, and they, one of my designers on the team was like, hey, let's make a game around sound. And we thought, yeah, okay, that's a cool idea, we could do that. Um, and we started playing with like using the microphone, uh, making sound to kind of see the world. It started off like kind of like a puzzle exploration game. Mm-hmm. And then when when we, we couldn't really like, sort that graphic out, right? We we started to have a we, we when we came out to the idea was like okay, we need to make sound to see, right? So how do we screw with players when they use sound to see? And the natural next step was to be like, hey, let's just put an enemy that hears you, right? And once we kind of got to that space, we were like, okay. A horror game just makes perfect sense for this. Um, and to be honest, like we didn't have any horror game experience when we made Lurking. We were just like, okay, this genre makes the most sense for the game. Let's just do it. And we just kind of figure it out as we go. And during that point in time, um, VR was like the first Oculus DK1 just came out. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, let's, can we do VR cheaply? And so we're like, okay, maybe the microphone will make sense. So we just kind of shoehorn the microphone in and it kind of worked. And 
you know, people seem to care, and it was nice. Yeah, it sounds like perfect for a tie-in with that uh, that new horror film. I was a Quiet just Place. about to say that, like when that yes. movie A Quiet Place came out. What did you think of that? So if you looked at the the Quiet Place um like graphic design or like the trailer, it looks exactly like the font, the color style, the treatment looks so similar to Stifled. And when it first came out, I kind of like tweeted at Josh. I was like, hey, John, John, you should like, hey, you check out Stifold. And then some of my friends who play Stifold was like helping me tweet at him as well. But it didn't, it didn't come out to anything. So it's going to go, you're going to move on to Emma Blunt and be like, yeah. look, tell your husband, John, uh, that he ripped off our game for this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, probably, no, that's not probably the way we're going to go. I don't but, think that's yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, another question from Shy. How do you kind of balance that VR game so that, you know, it is playable and enjoyable but isn't too frightening or um isn't too difficult for people uh if they're playing it so so our main focus on balancing is to make sure that the players can kind of figure out where they're going because the nature of the graphics just make it really hard to kind of ground yourself in the world so that's like the thing that's the main thing that we balance we balance how much sound you make in order to see like how like roughly how much you need to like what's the smallest sound that you can make to see and then uh, how easy it's for the enemy to kind of find you. But when it comes to the part of the horror, we kind of put it very clearly out there that it's like horror, it's a thriller experience. If you're, if you're getting the game, you're just going to be in it for a scare. right? We're not going to try to tone it down because we are afraid people get scared. right? We, we, are, we're, we set out to make people scared, and that's what we're going to stick to our guns with that. Yeah. Maybe to the detriment of like, the sales, but it is what it is. You know? Yeah. What I've always wondered about um, horror VR games is 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 there a point where you won't go? Because uh, I've some I've seen some people of playing when they play horror games on VR, they fall over and they almost hurt themselves and things like that. Is is there is there an experience too visceral that you might not go there? Uh, I think if, if let's say you were to give me like the whole full on triple A uh, production pipeline, I might try to reduce the amount of like blood and gore. But with Stifle, the art is so simplistic. We leave it a lot up to the player's imagination. So we kind of push it as much as we can, right? And what we always tell people is this, right? If VR is too intense for you, you can play it without VR. We made it so that it's not two different like game. It's just not two different game packages. It's just one game package. So if it gets too much, just turn off VR, just play it on the flat screen, and you'll be fine. Turn on yeah. all the lights. Make sure everyone <laughs> else is home to hold your hand and, uh, and go from there. I need that. Now, so Stifled was the first game that you kind of put together, um, and for an April Fool's joke this year, you you ended up making a game called Muffled Warfare. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that kind of came about? Okay, so the story is um, we well, I, I okay, so I get a lot of shit for this, but as an indie <laughs> game dev, my biggest, my favorite game, like that kind of inspired me to get into the games. It's really like Call of Duty, like the first Call of Duty, or the first Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Four. Mm-hmm. So. I always then people always ask us like, okay, hey, were they playing Stifold? And they're like, oh, it would be cool if I can shoot stuff or can I kill the baby? And then that has always <laughs> been something that I hear all the time. And I was like, yeah, that might be cool. And then I was one like GDC like last year or two years ago. I was hanging out with like uh, Winston from uh, Samurai Punk and some other friends, mm-hmm. and I was telling them them about this idea. And then we were talking about it, and then. I forgot who, but someone was like, oh, let's call it Muffle Warfare because, you know, that'd be funny. And he's like, Muffle Warfare, Modern Warfare. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, I guess. And then basically we did that. I, and I, for some, for, I don't know how I did it, but I convinced the team that it was a good idea. And then we made it. Yeah. And then the reception was pretty good. You got to, uh, got to the front page of uh, Reddit temporarily. Yeah, we got a front page of Reddit until we got taken down for self promo, I think. <laughs> We got a front page on Nike as well. Yeah. Nice. So it's cool. But um, I, I just looked at the sales recently. So it's not doing as well as I hope. But we're going to finish the game regardless because EA is just our way to kind of test it. And we got some plans to finish the game and we'll just do that. And we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, is there any opportunity that you could potentially make it into a VR game and kind of really marry it back into Stifled? Uh, so VR is something that uh, people, some people have asked us like, the art style really plays very well because we want to experience it. But unfortunately, I'm looking at the sales at Stifle. Uh, I don't think it's that uh, it's doing that well. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is like, I'm having conversation with like other business partners to see if I can kind of get it funded. So if there is interest from like a bigger publisher or some investors who are willing to do it, I'll be happy to give it a shot. Yeah. 
Do you think it's still a bit early for VR at this stage? Um, yeah, VR is VR is really cool, uh, but right now it's the, the price point is just too expensive for mass adoption. So VR as it, as it stands now, it will still rely on the um, kind of like the um, commercial or enterprise market for training purposes. So once those people start picking up and using it more for training, and the prices start coming down, I think that's where uh, VR will become a household thing. But until then, it it is still too early. Yeah. So you've got a small team. Uh, you've you've moved out of your office that you were previously in, and you did your you know twenty four hour stream to kind of celebrate the last day in the office. What's the the future for for you and your team? Um. So. Right now we're all working from home and uh, every every few days we'll go to one of my co-founders place to kind of talk about stuff to keep up keep everybody updated and it's the digital age so we just chat on Facebook or like uh, Discord to kind of make sure everybody's like doing the work that needs to be done uh, and then for the company wise this year we've got after Marvel Warfare we've got another like two more games that we're going to put out this year there's a third, the third one that I think there's one more, one more game that we kind of scrapped because we believe we didn't see much potential in it. But there's two more games that we're looking to put out this year, and we're hoping they kind of give us a shot. And we'll see. Yeah. Now we asked this of um of a fellow Singaporean game developer Ian Gregory. Um, what are oh, some of the yeah. disadvantages and advantages of of being placed in Singapore when you're trying to make a a job in and a career in the games industry? Uh, I think it's a it's a blessing and a curse. So I think I think Ian will say this as well, which I agree. It's like Singapore, it's a, it was situated in an Asian like kind of Asian part of the world, but our influences are very much Western. Like we from young, we get access to like all the Western films and Japanese films also. So Singapore gives it's a perfect kind of in my opinion, kind of a perfect mix between like the East and the West. Um, now there there are some things that are not great in Singapore, but other than that, it's that, that I think the cultural like, advantage or like it, cultural viewpoint is very different and that allows us to kind of work in both kind of cultures, I'd say. Uh, but also because like we're in Singapore, going, traveling to the West, to like America or the EU, it's really expensive and takes a lot of time. I, I'm sure like the Aussies know, know as well. Yeah, right? we can definitely empathize with that. Yeah. Are you going to make your way down to PAX? Come see us. Um, so I was at Paxos last year. Um, oh, yeah, this year, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to like keep keep the um, traveling to a minimal to kind of focus back on game design and game development because I've been traveling so much for the last three years for Stifold that I've not been making games. So uh, this year is like a good time for me to like get back to making games. And so that's what we're doing as a team this year. Uh, but if the opportunity arises and we've got something that makes sense, I'll, I'll go hang out for sure. Yeah. Do you know it's a, a nice, easy, uh, cheap flight? Singapore to Perth, two hundred dollars. Tiger, thanks to us, what's a Tiger? No, I'm just. No. <laughs> uh, wait, is it, was it that cheap? Yeah. I mean, I was there last year. Yeah, well, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty affordable. Yeah, yeah. it is, it is. Melbourne, yeah. who needs them? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just crash at um, Nick's place again. <laughs> yeah, Mitch is, Mitch will uh, have you on his couch. I'm sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you can hang out with uh, all his family and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I love it. Um, now, no Justin, one else though, just Justin. Just Justin. Yeah, no one yeah. else can come. <laughs> yeah. Now, Justin, if people want to find out a bit more about your games and uh, give them a go and have a have a play of them, whereabouts can they find that more info? Okay, so the best place to find us is uh, from our website. You'll get links to all our social stuff, which is www.stifoldgame.com. So that's s t i f l e d g a m e dot com. Uh, Stifold gets pronounced as Stifold a lot of times, but don't do that. It's Stifold, and then Mouth Warfare. It's muffawarfare.com, M-U-F-F-L-E-D, W-A-R-F-A-R-E.com. And jump yep. into the Discord as well, and you can share your memes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got the fancy, like, legit verified Discord link. So it's like discord.gg slash gatai games. Nice. G-A-T-T-A-I-G-A-M-E-S. Yeah, Why don't so we we're, we're special, yeah. We're not as special as them, obviously. We've got to, <laughs> we've got to, well, got to yeah. earn the right, so... Uh, yeah, they're really good fun. We had a great time when we played the, the game. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can head over to our website, which is pixelsift.com.au, and you can see some of the uh, some of that 24-hour stream where we streamed uh, some of that game. Yeah, we kind of just crashed it. And just crashed and, it. And, and we've got ourselves. like a new map coming very soon. So. Really? And a Battle Royale mode, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> And um, yeah, so that's uh, you can find all that sort of stuff. We'll be putting links up to all of that uh, on our website, and that website is pixelsift.com.au. 
sbs.com.au. Look, uh, unfortunately, it's kind of reached the end of the show. So thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Pixel Sips. So this episode was produced by Mitch Lowe, Fiona Bartholomeus, and I'm the executive producer. And thank you to Salty Dog Sounds, who've been providing some of the background music for our promos. Uh, as always, we'll be sticking all the links up uh, on our website, pixelsift.com.au. And you can support us by visiting the store at pixelsift.com.au forward slash sifter. That's S-I-F-T-E-R-S, sifters, uh, where you get 25% off and get socks and T-shirts and all that sort of stuff. Mitch, we're on social media as well. Where else can people find us? Yeah, so you can check out facebook.com.au forward slash pixelsiv, twitter.com.au forward slash pixelsiv, twitch.tv forward slash pixelsiv, and youtube.com forward slash pixelsiv au and pixelsiv.com.au forward slash discord and if you add another one of those to the google doc i am quitting <laughs> pixelsiv right now and uh mitch if people want to listen to our other episodes where should they go to as well yeah you should you can check it out on pocket casts um spotify now if you're into spotify which i know a lot of people are and apple podcasts is a great place to check out the show as well or go to the website and uh our next episode will be <laughs> not on the 24th of May because that's it'll, today it'll be on the 7th of June 7th of June uh, Mitch tomorrow night you're also going to be doing some Fortnite I uh, remember when I used to have fun on Friday nights and now um, yeah I'm going to play Fortnite Friday night Strictly Better will be there oh, you can the do Muffle today. Warfare we can also do Muffled Warfare I think I think people wait for, wait for the new map wait for the new we'll map, the new map and then we'll do it that Can't sounds wait. like a good plan Strictly Better is going to be there and a bunch of other people that unfortunately will be forced to play with me Justin, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for, for joining us, and we're looking forward to uh, jumping back in and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. shooting people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, Sniper is coming to PC very soon, so watch out for that. Yeah. Nice. There we go. Thanks a lot. We will see you all again this time next week, I guess. Thanks for watching. See ya. See you, Justin.